Quantum computing is now closer than ever. It will totally destroy the encryption we use for everything. But do we really need to worry about all our personal info being stolen or our bank accounts accessed? Find out today on AST. Welcome back, Quantum Explorers. Today's journey into the quantum realm is part of our Tech Horizons lineup. We're about to see how quantum leaps are reshaping everything from Wall Street to climate science. But first, let's chat about why Uncle Sam just dropped $65 million on quantum projects. Spoiler alert, it's going to affect you sooner than you think. Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. You know we always talk about the future, right? Like flying cars and robots, making us sandwiches, that kind of stuff. But what if I told you one of the biggest changes ever is happening right now? We're talking about quantum computing, and honestly, this could be even bigger than the internet. Yeah, it's a bit of a wild west out there right now. Huge potential, but a lot of unknowns too. Everyone's trying to figure out what's next. Totally. And we're diving deep today using some really interesting articles like from NextGov slash FCW, The Quantum Insider, Science Daily, and even First Ignite. All of them are about big developments in quantum computing just this year. Yeah, we're seeing some major progress, yeah. really significant stuff, and the implications are just huge. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump right in. One article that really stood out to me was from NextGov FCW, and it's all about CISA. They're the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, basically the ones who keep our digital world safe, right? Right. Well, they're saying we need to get ready because quantum computers might be able to crack our current encryption methods. Yeah, and they're urging agencies to start preparing right now, especially when it comes to uh, network inventory. So, like, taking inventory of all their digital stuff, yeah. right, making sure they know what they have and where it is. Exactly. It's about understanding their digital assets. Because if we don't get ahead of this, all of that could be vulnerable. They're anticipating that by, let's see, 2035, quantum computers could be strong enough to break the encryption algorithms we use every single day. 2035. That might sound far off. But then I read about Quantinuum, you know, their quantum computing company. And they're saying they'll have a universal, fully fault-tolerant quantum computer by 2030. That's just a few years away. Am I understanding that correctly? You are. And that's a big deal for a couple of reasons. Universal basically means it can handle any computing problem, just like the computer you're using now, but way more powerful thanks to quantum mechanics. So like my laptop, but with quantum superpowers. Exactly. And fault tolerant is about stability and reliability, which is a big deal with these systems. Even the tiniest disturbance can cause errors. A fault tolerant computer could actually correct those errors as it goes, making it much more useful in real world applications. And they're putting their money where their mouth is. They've already hit some pretty big milestones, like their work with Microsoft, where they reached 12 logical qubits. Right. And that might not seem like a lot, but each logical qubit is a step toward building a truly functional quantum computer, much more stable than the physical qubits. So it's not just about building these machines, it's about knowing what to do with them, right? Exactly. And that's what makes their partnership with Singapore really interesting. Singapore's got this whole national quantum strategy, actually. They're really serious about becoming a major player in all of this. And this partnership, it's more than just like sharing resources, right? Oh yeah, for sure. They're really focused on how to use quantum computing to, well, revolutionize computational biology. Computational biology, okay, that's a mouthful. What does that even mean? So it's basically using computers to understand really complex biological systems. Like, imagine simulating how a new drug interacts with your, you know, with your specific DNA, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Faster drug discovery, personalized medicine, understanding how diseases actually work. It's got huge potential. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. It's like science fiction is becoming reality. And Quantinium's putting their money where their mouth is. <laughs> yeah. They're setting up an entire research and development center in Singapore 
just for this. So we've got governments getting ready for this post-quantum world, companies racing to build these machines, and international teams popping up everywhere. It's a lot to keep track of. It really is a global effort. And it's not just governments and companies either. Universities are doing some really important work pushing the limits of what we can even do. That's right. Places like MIT, the University of Chicago, they're like the rock stars of quantum. And what's cool is that they're each taking a different approach. MIT is all about superconducting quivets. So these are based on superconductivity, where electricity flows with, get this, zero resistance. Zero resistance, like a super highway for electrons. Exactly. And then you've got the University of Chicago. They're exploring what's called um, topological quivets. And these are theoretically even more stable, less likely to have errors, which is a big challenge right now. So different paths, but the same goal, quantum supremacy. Like everyone's climbing the same mountain, but from different sides. And some of them are trying to build a whole new mountain. Remember that article from Science Daily? The one about combining the internet with the quantum internet? <laughs> That's a total game changer. Yeah. We won't even have to wait for a new network to be built. They're talking about sending entangled photons, you know, those spooky particles. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. And they can send those along with regular laser pulses all through the same fiber optic cables we already have. It's kind of brilliant. They're merging two completely different worlds. This could make the quantum internet a lot more practical. This is all so exciting, but to be honest, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. It's just a ton of information at once. I get it. And this is where that first Ignite analysis really got me thinking. They talk about how we get so focused on the hardware, the quibits, the lasers, all that. Right. But we forget about the software. That's where AI comes in. Oh, right. It's like having this super powerful engine, but you still need someone to drive the car. Exactly. We need AI to control these really complex quantum systems to optimize them, no. to make them actually useful. Yeah, It's not enough to just have the hardware, right? We need the software to unlock their true potential. So AI is like the conductor of the quantum orchestra, bringing all the different instruments together. I like that. It's like we're standing on the launch pad, you know, the engines are running, but we're still figuring out where this rocket's going. And that's what makes it so exciting. This could change everything, like literally change the world. But this isn't some far off future, mm. you know, it's happening right now. The research, the investments, everything, it's all happening now. So no quantum computers at Best Buy just yet. Not quite, but we're getting closer. Yeah. That's why it's important to, you know, to really pay attention to what's going on. The potential is huge, but there are challenges too. Because this isn't just about like faster computers or something. No, not at all. This is about those big problems, you know, diseases like uh, Alzheimer's, cancer, climate change, things we've been trying to solve forever. Quantum computing might be the key. It's not just the technology, it's what we decide to do with it. Exactly. And that's a conversation we all need to be part of. I don't know, it's a lot to wrap your head around. Where do we even start? Just start asking questions, I think. What are you curious about? What problems do you wish someone would solve, you know? That's a good point. We talked about computational biology, how it could change medicine. Maybe there's a disease that's touched your life. And you start looking into how quantum computing could help find new treatments. Or maybe you're passionate about, I don't know, renewable energy. And you could look into how quantum simulations could be used to build better solar panels or something. There are so many possibilities. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like we all need to become quantum physicists overnight. It's more about staying curious, asking questions, and just being open to what's possible. Because this future, it's coming, whether we're ready or not. It really is. Yeah. And the more we know, the better we'll be able to deal with whatever comes next. Well said. Okay, so on that note, we're going to leave you with this. What problem are you most curious to see a quantum computer solve? Think about it. Maybe even do some research, see what's out there. Who knows? Maybe the next big breakthrough will come from a question you asked after listening to this. Until next time, keep exploring. All right, quantum explorers, we've reached the end of our quantum journey for now. Remember, this isn't just about mind-bending math. It's about revolutionizing how we discover drugs, predict markets, and maybe even save our planet. Next time on ASD, 
we're diving into AI's wild ride through the stock market. Until then, this is Theodore.